Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new my name is Emily and I make two videos a week one about books and one about beauty. So today because it is Tuesday we are going to be talking about books and today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite recommendations for one of my favorite genres and that is thrillers. So today I'm going to be sharing some thrillers that I think you would love if you like an exciting story, some twists in the plot, and a book that you just want to keep turning the pages. Honey? Honey? Because a lot of these books rely on major plot twists, I can't give too much of a summary, but I'm hoping to give you enough that's intriguing. You might know if you might like it, um, but my full reviews are on Goodreads, so you can always check that out as well. They're always linked down below. All right, so let's start with one that I've got right here, and that is The Silent Patient by Alex, this last name. I'm so sorry, I did not look it up how to pronounce it. But The Silent Patient is um, a book that I think has been hyped up a lot. I think it won a Goodreads Choice Award, but honestly, I think it's for great reason. So it is about a woman named Alicia who um, shot her husband in the face five times and then never spoke again. And it is about a criminal psychotherapist who is really hell-bent on getting to know Alicia, getting her to talk again, and unraveling that mystery. So this was a big, a huge page turner for me, and part of that is because the, it has really short chapters, and I love books with short chapters. I don't know why, I think it's some sort of psychological trick that makes me really wanna keep turning the pages and keep reading. So this one was, I, I like, a jaw-dropping twist at the end. Up next we have No Exit by Taylor Adams and this book I read on a plane ride and I read the whole book on not quite all of it on the two hour flight but sitting in the airport and then on the bus ride to the hotel afterwards so this book was like perfect for taking up that boring traveling time and I'm glad I didn't read it on a road trip though because this is about a girl named Darby who is traveling to go see her dying mother and on the way she gets caught in a blizzard and has to pull off at a tiny little rest stop and gets totally snowed in with a bunch of strangers. So while she's trying to, you know, make the most of that time, trying to get a cell phone signal to talk to her family because there's a tragedy going on, um, she takes a walk outside and notices what looks like a kidnapped child in the back of a van. So now she's snowed in at a gas station with strangers, one of whom seems like they're probably a kidnapper. So this one, I totally think they should make it into like an action movie. It was fantastic, highly recommend. All right, so those two books were the only ones that I actually have physical copies of with me right now. All of the other ones I either read as an audiobook or read on an, as an ebook or I lent out my physical copy to somebody else. So I will make sure I scoot over a little bit and put up a picture of the cover so you know what to look for if you are browsing for these books. So next up, I wanted to recommend really any of Riley Sager's books. I think he's an incredible author and I'm already like counting down the days until his next book comes out in the summer. But my favorite one of his books that I've that he's put out is The Last Time I Lied. And this is about um, a woman who went to a summer camp as a kid and her time there ended in a tragedy. Um, the girls went missing, they never found her cabin mates again, and the camp shut down. But now the camp is opening back up and she's been asked to come back as a counselor. So she comes back as like a camp counselor, like an art educator, and there are some weird kind of creepy parallels that start to form between her experience there as a kid and her experience there now. And because I love the way Riley Sager writes his books, in this one he really blends the two timelines and kind of alternates between them so you're always feeling like you're somehow one step ahead of the characters but also a step behind at the same time. So the way the story unfolds is, again, a complete page turner. I could not put this book down. I can't get any quiet to film a YouTube video today. I don't understand. The first time I tried to film this, somebody started vacuuming in my house. Now there's like propeller planes flying by. I have no idea what's going on. All right, so the next book I wanted to re recommend, I actually recommend, again, all the books by this author, and that is Gillian Flynn. You may have read or seen the movie adaptation of Gone Girl, but my favorite of her books is Sharp Objects. And I actually watched the, there's like an HBO um, TV series adaptation as well, starring Amy Adams, and I recommend that as well. But 
I'm always pro reading the book before you watch the film adaptation. So Sharp Objects is about a woman named Camille who is a reporter and she travels back to her hometown that she's, you know, gotten out of this tiny rural town, made it big in the city, kind of, you know, she's like a small time journalist, but she goes back because of her connection to the town to write about some girls who have gone missing and turned up dead. And while she's there, there uh, she has to reconnect with her mother she hasn't spoken to in years, and her um, half-sister, who is uh, a 13-year-old, who is very different from how Camille was when she was a kid, but also very similar in a lot of ways. So it's a lot of this dark, creepy family drama, the past in this rural town that she thought she has shaken, but it has to come back to. So, uh, and if you don't like uh, kind of an unlikable heroine, I would not recommend Jillian Flynn's books because she's really good at making it so you don't like a single character in the book, but you still are really invested in the story. The next book is The Chain by Adrian McKinty. And this one, a lot of people who reviewed it and I felt kind of similar, the first half of the book is gripping, super compelling and amazing. And then it's a little weaker at the end, but I still think it's worth the read. And this is about a woman named Rachel who is heading to an oncologist appointment for herself, um, gonna get some bad news. And then she gets a phone call, but the phone call is not the bad news that she was expecting. It's a phone call from another woman who says that she has kidnapped Rachel's daughter, and the only way for Rachel to get her daughter back is to pay a ransom and then kidnap another child and continue the chain. So it reveals kind of this underground network of ransom payments and kidnappings that are done by parents of children who have been kidnapped and then there's somebody who's kind of masterminding the whole thing so rachel's got to figure out you know how she can get her daughter back when obviously she doesn't want to commit a crime but she will do anything to save her daughter so it was a super interesting book and like i said the ending is not you know, it kind of falls off a little bit, but I honestly still think it is worth finishing the book. The next one is for those legal thriller fans out there, and that is The Holdout by Graham Moore. So this one is about Maya Seal, who is now a defense attorney, but whose career in law kind of started when she had jury duty in a murder trial. And she was the one juror who convinced everybody else not to convict this African-American man of killing a white student who it kind of seemed like he was romantically involved with. She was convinced of his innocence and convinced everybody else there wasn't enough evidence to convict him. And then 10 years later, she's now a defense attorney. She is, you know, got her own career, but a true crime like docu-series kind of thing is happening about that case. They get all 12 jurors together and one of them turns up dead in Maya's hotel room and she's got to prove her innocence and it kind of ties back to the original crime that they were on the jury for in the first place. So this one again was a page turner but it was really interesting um, through that legal perspective. My next recommendation is another legal thriller and this one is 13 by Steve Cavanaugh and this is part of a series but I haven't read any of the other books in the series and I don't think you obviously need to to be able to enjoy the story. This is about a actor who is on trial who is insisting he did not murder his wife and her lover but kind of seems like he did. All the evidence is kind of pointing to him. So you're getting that perspective of this is what's happening in the courtroom. But you also learn that one of the jurors is in fact the serial killer responsible for the death of this actor's wife. But throughout you're not 100% sure which juror is the killer. So it's very suspenseful even though you kind of know sort of the story the way that it unfolds is very suspenseful it's super interesting and the author keeps you in the dark just enough so that you're really wanting to figure out exactly what happened and how this plays out so my next recommendation is friend request by laura marshall and this was a book that i kind of picked up on a whim but i'm really glad that i did and this whole time i thought i knew what was going on i was like mm, i don't know if i really like this book it seems kind of predictable but it was not Every twist and turn, I was like, whoa, I did not see that coming, but not in a way where it seems misplaced, you know, because I do think there are some books where they overuse the plot twist to the point where you're like, well, that wasn't even a twist. That was just like you cl clearly set up something else and then 
made the opposite thing happen. It, it didn't make any sense. But this book is not like that. It has those twists that you're not expecting, but then you kind of realize, oh, oh, it does make sense. Okay. But it's partly because the main character is so confused about what's going on. So let me summarize a little bit. Maria Weston is a woman who died 25 years ago. Our main character, Louise, is sure of that. But then she gets a friend request from Maria Weston. So Louise is sure, right? She's like, sure, Maria died. But then who set up a Facebook account in her name? And who knows enough about what would really upset Laura? I mean, what would really upset Louise? from her background to do that, to terrify her like that. So the way this timeline unfolds, it's kind of intertwining the story from the 80s and from the present, and it helps you stay confused, which sounds crazy, but it really makes the plot more suspenseful, but there's suspense inherent in the plot too, if that makes sense. I don't think I'm making any sense with this. Anyways, you should read this book it pleasantly surprised me and I thought the author did an incredible job of keeping me on my toes. All right, and my last recommendation I think should show you how good this book is because I haven't even finished it. So I guess if I hate the ending, then maybe I'll retract that recommendation. But that is Don't Look For Me by Wendy Walker. And I'm currently listening to this audiobook and I'm about three quarters of the way done with it. So this is about a woman named Molly Clark who disappears. She abandons her car and her cell phone on the side of the road. She made a charge at a casino, left a note for her family that says, don't look for me, I can't do this anymore, I'm starting over. And it kind of makes sense, you know, it's on the anniversary of her daughter's death, which she accidentally had a hand in, it was a horrible tragedy, you know, her family's kind of falling apart, it seems like her husband was having an affair, she just wants to disappear. But her daughter, Nicole, who is in her 20s, is sure that her mother did not just walk away. There are parts of the story that don't make any sense and she thinks that they should not be accepting that official story. So Nicole goes back to the town where her mother disappeared and she is investigating and it seems like everybody's really eager to help. But then all these secrets keep kind of coming up and she keeps being like, well, what why are people only telling me half the truth? Why do I have to find out the rest for myself? So the secrets keep coming up, things keep unraveling, and as the reader, you are getting Nicole's perspective alternated with her mother's perspective, which I don't wanna to spoil too much about, but suffice it to say, I am extremely eager to finish this book. All right, so those are my recommendations for thrillers. I would love to hear your recommendations in the comments. I absolutely love reading new thrillers. I love being surprised by twists and turns in the plots. I love short chapters and books that I can't put down. So please, 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 if there was a book I didn't mention that you think I would love, leave it down in the comments and I will add it to my list of books I want to read. So I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications before you go and I'll see you next time.